Welcome to Dirty Data here on the fourth period. That's Aaron Ward and Shane Kelly. I'm Dave Pinota. And gentlemen, the Washington Capitals have nine wins in their last 11 games, just one regulation loss. Wardo, we know it's not all Alex Ovechkin, big part, but not all of it. So what's going on with this Caps club? Well, you'd like to say it's stars being stars. Clearly, Ovi second in the league in scoring. Carlson tops amongst defensemen in scoring. But there's such a laundry list of guys out, you can't say that. I mean, I have to look down at my list. And Baxter, Mantha, and Eller on IR. Oshie, Shiri, Schultz on day-to-day. So that's a clear group of talented guys that aren't in this lineup. So I have, by default, I have to say this falls on Laviolette. This is a system that suits this team that you can insert the pieces. It's a sum of the parts team that knowing from game to game, you're going to play the same system. And what that means is basically he presses, right? So this is a team that's adapted to what's been asked. Number one in goals for, but surprisingly for the Washington Capitals, number six in goals against their, their penalty kill is top 10. We don't usually associate quality defense with the Washington Capitals. So Laviolette has a system where the defensemen have to be up supporting the play, which creates opportunity on turnovers to not go back in your defensive end. This is a group playing the system incredibly well. And I mean, the, the goals against for me is the key indicator that this group has got that playoff mentality already. It's not like they've run in over the course of the season to very easy teams. They just dispatched Florida. They just dispatched Carolina with basically an entire line from Hershey playing in their lineup. So for me, Washington's system dictates their success. And we came into this season thinking, oh, Washington's window, it's just barely a jar. No, you've got a group of older guys really putting up numbers and, and secondary guys I mean, really, absolutely playing the support group uh, very well. Yeah, kudos to the system that they're playing because, uh, as you point out, they've got this line of Hershey Bears out there. What the system has allowed them to do is, is in analytics, we talk a lot about goals above replacement with the idea being that, you know, an AHL player, if you just call them up, like the league average player, they're going to be a net negative. They'll cost you goals. The system that they play in Washington means that when they call up these guys from Hershey, they're relatively solid. You know, they can be good depth players. What you find a lot with teams that struggle when they get hit with the injury bug is the call-ups end up costing them. They end up making a lot of mistakes. If that's not happening, you can ride, you know, what may turn into a career year from Ovi uh, and a couple other players to a really good record. Well, one of the things we also don't mention is the fact that they're not really giving up a ton of shots again, so we don't have to even talk about goaltending because they're not facing a ton of shots in the midst of a game. So, again, an endorsement for the system and the players playing the system. I mean, this is a tight-knit group playing a tight-style game. And with respect to Alex Ovechkin, I mean, everybody wants to focus on the 19 goals and the chase, and that's great because I love it, and I think he's going to do it at some point um, before his career wraps up. But he's got 18 assists on the season as well, guys. This isn't just him going all out there trying to put the puck in the back of the net so he can break Gretzky's record this season. He's trying to contribute across the board. And how does that type of a player modify his game into a system like we just talked about? Well, I think there's a realization that he has more of a role than just putting the puck in the net. If you look back to the Montreal game, they keyed on him, especially in the power play. And what he did was he realized that I can take both the attention from myself and utilize it against the opponent. So he understands that... I guess the taste of the Stanley Cup from the first time has created a, a desire to have it again. And he knows that he has to adapt his game almost in the mold of what happened to Steve Eisman back in his career, where he went from all offense to stepping back and realizing he has to be an all-encompassing player. And you see more of that from Ovi, understanding that, you know, if everybody's going to key on that one shot, a simple shot pass, I mean, everybody's wide open because everybody wants to neutralize Ovechkin. So it's smart play from Ovechkin that I can give him credit for. Yeah, only four power play goals this year, which is, you know, wild when you consider how good that shot is. 10 or 11 wrist shot goals, so he's changed his game. We talk in basketball analytics a lot about a concept called gravity. You know, Steph Curry, nobody helps off of him because his three-point shot's so deadly. Same thing, I think, is finally happening with Ovi and that one-timer is where teams are cheating so much to it, he can pass the puck off now as you're talking about Wardo. And the other thing with him is he is getting older. You know, he's, he, he, time is undefeated. It will come for him eventually. But when you talk about these you know, these all-time great players, these world-class guys, they don't age like a standard player is going to, like you kind of did, Ordo, back when you were in the league. You can get seasons from them that are among the best they'll ever have late in their career because they're just starting from such a high peak compared to the average player. So where you might say, okay, an average 35-year-old might be out of the NHL. Ovi, he could do this till he's 40. 
you know, it, it's conceivable. Well, we'd all love to see that, definitely, Shane. I mean, if he could keep that going until he's 40, I think that's better for the sport across the board. Uh, but shifting back to the season, Wardo, eventually this team is going to get healthier. And some of those guys are going to jump back into that lineup. How do we not get to a point where that starts to affect the system that is now working so well? Yeah, I would tell you that the greatest concern from being in a locker room uh, as a player, and I imagine as a coach, is upsetting the chemistry, right? The apple cart is, is so perfectly balanced that you're, you're getting what you want out of the team, and to bring all these guys back is such a great concern. So I imagine they'll slowly insert these guys, make sure they're fully healthy. I mean, it, it wouldn't benefit you to put a guy back in early, especially in light of you have success, usually rushing guys back if there's a reason to rush them back. Uh, Ovi, clearly, it's better to have Baxter at his side than not to have Baxter at his side. But uh, this is this is nothing that, that, that I think Washington has to concern themselves with. There's enough guys that are on IR that are veteran enough to realize that they have a role and, and an established kind of level of comfort when they are finally inserted in trying to assimilate themselves in, acclimate themselves into getting into the same game that's been played for the last couple months. Yeah, I will say the one thing with bringing these guys back is we know they're better than the guys they're using now. And the underlying numbers point to this being kind of a, a top 10 to 12 team right now, not necessarily top one or two or three. So the one thing to think about is, is this sustainable with this group? I know, you know, the system can do what it can, but at some point someone's going to adjust. And it's easier to counter that when you have mantha backstrom that style of player than the hershey bears line if anything from this though this experience is getting those guys in from hershey in light of the fact the playoffs have come and again we always talk about this as a marathon guys again will get injured and at some point in the playoffs you may insert someone and the fact that they played the system they've they played it and felt that success should be much easier on these brand new guys getting involved in this lineup well we'll see how much longer they can sustain this and obviously the reinforcements will return to this lineup. They've got the Florida Panthers on Tuesday, a rematch of Friday's 4-3-W for the Caps. We'll keep tabs on this team and more here on the fourth period and in our Dirty Data segments. That's Aaron Ward and Shane Kelly. I'm Dave Pinota. Until next time.